I think that uh, online dating is the newest way to do the same old thing. It's very practical. First of all, it's cheap. In America, we spend $50 a month to go on a dating service. You can spend $50 a night in a bar and meet nobody. And, um, you know, and if you meet, go on the dating service, you're going to have a host of new people to meet. So it's practical. We're all overworked, we're working too hard, and we're very familiar with the computer, so this is not uh, a technology that is um, frightening to most young people, particularly. And so it's easy, it's efficient, and um, I also think that a great many people move to the cities. They're not in their same hometown anymore. Their mother cannot introduce them to just the right boy. Uh, they, we are marrying later in life. Um, so people are not um, marrying the boy they met in high school. They're not marrying the girl they met in college. Even in their early 20s, they're not marrying the person that they are, are um, going out with. And so the older they get, um, they've sort of gone through the pool of people at work. They've gone through their friends. Uh, they know what's happening in the park. And so they are looking for new ways to meet people. And the Internet is a cheap, easy way to do it. Just the newest way to do the same old thing. Millions of people are taking antidepressants that affect exactly that chemistry of the brain that you are talking about. How does that uh, affect uh, romantic love? I think this is, first of all, I just want to tell you privately, I think this is, thank, uh, thank you for asking the question because it is, this is important. I am particularly concerned about the use of antidepressants, particularly serotonin boosters, things like Prozac, Paxil, some of the newer ones, Effexor, uh, Cymbalta. Um, because they drive up serotonin in the brain. This is wonderful if you need those drugs. Now, there's some people who have um, chemical imbalances. They need these drugs to get out of bed, to find love, to create a good family life. I'm not talking about them. But um, um, a Harvard psychiatrist recently uh, estimated that 72% of people in the United States on um, antidepressants are on them needlessly. They should not be taking them. And what SSRIs do is they drive up serotonin in the brain, and serotonin has a negative correlation with dopamine. So as you're driving up serotonin, you are driving down dopamine. And dopamine is the uh, brain chemical associated with romantic love. So I think that um, people who stay on these drugs long term are jeopardizing their ability to fall in love and to stay in love. And in fact, uh, we know they kill the sex drive. In 73% of men and women, uh, the sex drive uh, simply just dies when you take these kinds of antidepressants. And um, the sex drive is important for triggering feelings of romantic love and attachment. Any kind of sexual activity drives up dopamine in the brain and can pull you over the threshold into falling in love. With orgasm, there's a real rush of oxytocin and vasopressin. And those are the chemicals associated with feelings of deep attachment. So when you take these antidepressants, you're not only suppressing the dopamine system, so you might not even initiate falling in love, but it can jeopardize your ability to climb into bed with the people that you do love, and therefore killing deep attachments too. Can we say that uh, the more you know yourself, the more you love yourself, the better you are able to find the, the right person to love? I've often wondered whether the more you know yourself, the better you can find the right person. Because, I mean, for millions of years, chimpanzees didn't go through self-analysis in order to find the, a right mate. Uh, so, on the other hand, having now spent um, over five years developing this questionnaire, I honestly do think that the more you have a deep understanding of who you are, um, the more you can realize why it is you're attracted to certain people rather than others, but it also helps you understand how to reach them. I think these four basic biological types uh, define intimacy differently. Uh, they court differently. They're looking for different kinds of things. They build different kinds of relationships. And if you want to reach somebody, um, you can use the words that appeal to them, uh, the ideas that appeal to them. Um, the type of intimacy that appeals to them. So knowledge is power. Knowledge of the self is power. I know that you love poetry. And um, I was thinking about a, a poet that I love, Charles Baudelaire, the French poet who wrote love poems that are among the most beautiful. And he was deeply unhappy in love. How do you explain that? I think that uh, unhappiness drives up dopamine in the brain and makes you more creative. A great many people who are not at all poetic will find themselves writing love poetry in the middle of the night when they've been rejected. 
when you take a look at so many of our highly creative people, they've been manic depressive, people who had periods of, 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 of stunning uh, over, uh, people who've had um, uh, overwhelming problems with manic depressiveness, but in their manic stages, which is expressive of the dopamine system, they become extremely creative. When you are high on dopamine, you are creative. As a matter of fact, um, I've seen uh, drawings made by people before they were given L-dopa, people who've had Parkinson's disease. One woman had Parkinson's disease. She was drawing stick figures for dogs um, before she was given L-dopa, which drives up dopamine. After the L-dopa uh, medications, she was drawing dogs that looked like Rembrandt dogs. And um, I'm not surprised that many of our great poets have been extremely unhappy people. It was part of their genius, driving up dopamine in the brain and creating that creativity. <laughs> Who are your favorite love poets? Well, right now I'm reading Akhmatova, uh, Zimborska. Uh, I love Baudelaire. Uh, I love Neruda. Mm -hmm. uh, there's very few poets that I don't like. <laughs> the only ones I don't like are the ones I don't understand. Um, it's worth working. Uh, uh, I mean, I like, uh, I like a lot of T.S. Eliot, although you have to work on it. Um, but I like simple poetry that I can understand. I like Billy Collins, uh, an American poet. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like poetry. I think it is a wonderful way to get into the heart. I think it is, um, it's almost, the world is littered with these artifacts of love. And they're all the same. Uh, the basic ideas in the love poetry in Brazil, I would guess, is exactly the same as that in Japan and among the Australian Aborigines, among the uh, Eskimos. Uh, you know, these are, it's a, poetry is a wonderful way to express profoundly basic feelings, and that's, of course, what love is all about. Thank you. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs>